happy to be talking to you about one of the most famous short stories of the 20th century, one that's famous for a lot of reasons. It's incredibly shocking ending uh, was a, a huge, huge thing when it first came out. This story was published in 1948 uh, in the New Yorker, and when it came out up to that point, no story in the history of that uh, long and prestigious magazine had elicited as much, uh, you know, mail from people who were either, you know, fired up about the story or unhappy about it or canceling subscription or uh, more often than anything, wanting to know where this lottery in America was actually taking place. Uh, of course, the big joke uh, by Shirley Jackson is that the lottery, in fact, is not taking place anywhere because this is a work of fiction. Uh, this story is uh, built around uh, a severe commentary of how tradition works in American culture. Uh, tradition, both as a means of uh, just everyday routine and also the larger sort of religious traditions and superstitions that we have in our lives. Uh, obviously, the central tradition that they have here in this story is one in which they get together one time every year to run a lottery uh, for each family. They choose a family uh, that, you know, is the one who is, who is picked. And then from that family, one person must be sacrificed via stoning. Uh, the reason for this sacrifice, as Old Man Warner, uh, our conservative force in the story who wants uh, things to remain as they've always been, and who grumbles uh, frequently about how things ain't the way they used to be. He's sort of the uh, old man shaking his fist on the lawn at, at all the young people who don't respect anything anymore. Uh, that, hilariously enough, being uh, a theme that never seems to go away even today, and this story was written more than 60 years ago, uh, that the reason that they're doing this sacrifice is for good crops. Uh, as Warner says, uh, lottery in June, corn be heavy soon, which is the idea that via human sacrifice, you're actually going to better the food crop output that you get later on in the year. Uh, as you probably know, human history is uh, rife with many instances of human sacrifice for superstitious reasons. Uh, it's kind of crazy, but that's how it is. Um, for example, of other traditions that we have in the world today, which are the types of things that uh, Jackson was calling out, uh, consider uh, looking no further than Christmas trees, for instance. Uh, we have these trees uh, in our house, uh, if you are. Uh, if you celebrate Christmas, or uh, in various other religions, there are also uh, traditions in those as well. Halloween, we say trick-or-treat. Why do we do this? Uh, surely, initially, there was some reason, but we've become very distant from it now. Uh, also, uh, when all of you graduate from school, uh, chances are if you go to commencement, you're going to wear a hat that has a square on the top. Uh, why on earth? Are you going to wear that type of strange hat that you wear for no other reason? Uh, surely there was some sort of initial purpose for it, but that purpose has long been obscured uh, for us, and that was the type of commentary that Shirley Jackson was bringing up. Um, so there's that uh, tradition, superstition, also the idea that uh, things aren't the way they used to be. Those are major themes that are brought up in this story. Uh, another thing that is key to point out is that Shirley Jackson put uh, a number of interesting little things uh, in the story for the deep reader to consider uh, with more detail. One is the names of the key characters. Uh, first off, Summers and Graves, the two men who are in charge of running the lottery, obviously their names have meanings. Summers is this jovial guy who seems happy. Uh, but ultimately, uh, he's the one who keeps control of the box that has the pieces of paper inside of it that has the dot of death uh, on it. Graves, obviously, is sort of his uh, right-hand man in this, and his name, uh, the meaning of, is quite obvious. Two names, though, are a little bit less obvious uh, that play a major role in this story. Uh, the first one comes up right at the beginning of the story. Uh, Dickie Delacroix. It says Delacroix. The villagers pronounce this name Delacroix. And then later on in the story, we get 
is Delacroix, uh, his mother, uh, coming into the story as well. This Delacroix name is particularly intriguing because Delacroix, from the French, actually means of the cross. So this name, of the cross, uh, would imply a religious fervor or a religious belief. But the key thing here is not that it's the type of good and ben ben beneficial religious belief that results in positivity for a community, but as it says in the story, they pronounce the name incorrectly. So it's not a positive uh, religion, it's the kind of religion that is used uh, via evil, or the type of religion that's used uh, out of misunderstanding, where you in fact uh, get this character where their name is something that they're doing it wrong. The idea that somebody believes in a tradition or has a belief, but they are misinterpreting it. And as you'll notice there right at the end of the story, it says Mrs. Delacroix, with her name mispronounced, selected a stone so large she had to pick it up with both hands. So this Delacroix person, who in fact is misrepresenting the pronunciation of their own name and via their own traditional religious belief, is the person who's wielding the largest stone to kill an other, thus positioning that sort of, uh, you know, misleading element. So that obviously has a lot of significant controversial undertones that uh, Shirley Jackson definitely was aware of. Another name is hardly plays a role in the story, but it's the type of suggestive hint uh, that demonstrates just how much can be accomplished in a piece of fiction. Uh, when Summers is going through and he's calling off the various names, there's one name that stands out. He says, Alan, Mr. Summers said, Anderson, Bentham. Bentham, if you haven't heard of it, is uh, named after Jeremy Bentham, who is a utilitarian philosopher. Utilitarianism is a philosophy in which happiness is the primary goal and that all ethical decisions must be made with the idea of what brings the most happiness to the most people. So Shirley Jackson put this name into the story on purpose because that would be the idea that if you have a lottery, a utilitarian viewpoint would hold that you must willingly sacrifice yourself for the good of others if it's going to lead to the most happiness for the most people. That's how utility is defined in a utilitarian viewpoint. So under that model, Tess Hutchinson, when she finds out that she is the person who is to die, should have done so willingly and proudly and happily because she was dying for the good of the crops for everyone else in the community. Obviously, she does not do so. She fights it and she argues against it. And Old Man Warner, as a good old-fashioned utilitarian, would have spoken out against that sort of idea, that she should have died honorably. So, that's a lot of complicated stuff. The idea of Delacroix and Bentham, uh, those are really complex things that are put into this story. Another thing to consider is that this story was written by a woman. And one thing in the story is that the only people who are drawing the, the pieces of paper that what might result in someone's death, the people who are drawing for the families are men, but the person who ultimately ends up dying. So some theorists have actually suggested that because the person who ultimately dies is a woman, and she dies because of a man, and a man was running this whole entire system to begin with, is suggestive that all women, the, their fates are sort of being unjustly determined by the men in their lives. That's just another possible interpretation that you can take out of this story. And a last thing to consider is Tess Hutchinson. She, all the way through this, she shows up a little bit late. She's laughing, making jokes. She's sort of going along with the lottery. She's all for it until the moment when push comes to shove and she is the one who's going to be getting it in the end. Uh, and then she speaks out against it. That's a demonstrative of the hypocrisy of people who obey things that are going on in their cultures until it comes to turn against them. This would be the type of person who would support 
uh, a Nazi regime or an unjust government or something like that that's totally for it and says nothing against it until the moment that it comes back to bite them. And then they speak out against it, but by then it's probably too late. So Tess Hutchinson represents the hypocrisy of somebody who obeys authority until the moment that it goes against them. So, obviously, there's a lot going on in this story, even though at face value, it's just a simple, mysterious story with some foreshadowing in the beginning where the kids are putting the rocks together, all that sort of crazy stuff, and ultimately, it ends up ending in this incredibly haunting last little bit. The story is one of the greatest endings, where it says, Old Man Warner was saying, Come on, come on, everyone. Steve Adams was in the front of the crowd of villagers, with Mrs. Graves behind him. It isn't fair. It isn't right, Mrs. Hutchinson screamed, and then they were upon her. And then they were upon her. That's how Hutchinson gets it, and that's how the story ends.